Well, it's awful good to be here tonight. We appreciate the goodness of the Lord. And let's all stand and get right in the service tonight. The Lord's good and His mercy endureth forever. Can you say amen to that? Amen. The Lord is good and His mercy endure forever. The Lord is good and His mercy endure forever. The Lord is good and His mercy endure forever. Praise the Lord. It's good to be in revival tonight, Sister Sir. If you come tonight and lead us in a verse of a song, I appreciate that. And uh, Brother Paul, he's uh, had to work tonight. see a lot of other cars coming on in. And uh, uh, Brother Jacob, he had an appointment to preach. And other preachers is at their home church tonight. So we look for the crowd to get a little bigger every night. And uh, But we just appreciate each and every one of you being here tonight in the service. And uh, we're looking for great things from the Lord. We're looking uh, for good things from God. We uh, was in service last night over at uh, Brother Tommy's. And good service, good singing, good, good everything. And uh, then a dear brother got up and just sung. And the Holy Ghost literally just walked right in the service. Amen. Boy, when he walks in, that's the most precious thing in the world. When the Holy Ghost, but he, but he's got to be welcome, Amen. Amen. He ain't gonna push your door down. No, he's got to be welcome. We as the people of God have got a long for him to come. So let's all get our minds and affections on things above tonight. What are we singing, sister? Nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood. Let's all stand and help him sing. Praise the Lord. Get in.
appreciate this, sir. Thank the Lord. God prepare me to be a sanctuary. Amen. I certainly thank the Lord for uh, God saving us and putting us in the family of God. And I'd like to just tell everybody something tonight. I appreciate you. I know a lot of you's worked hard today and had a day of labor and, and took the time to come and be in the house of the Lord. And I just want to tell you, I appreciate you coming. And I, we appreciate you and love you with all of our heart. I thought about when David became king, the Bible said when all of them come in, when Israel and Judah had finally come together, the Bible said that every one of them went home with a flag and a wine and a piece of bread. They all went home with something. And you know, if I had a request tonight of the Lord, I would say, Lord, would you let everybody take something home uh, tonight? It's good to have Scarlett with us tonight. My mom said last night, she said, I hate uh, Scarlett had that surgery right here at the revival, but you can't keep a good girl down, can you? <laughs> Amen. Testify, Sister Scarlett. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. You just want your children to know the Lord the way you know the Lord. Amen. Don't you do it? I mean, I want my children, not, not that I've got anything on anybody else, right. but I know what I got. Right. I know what I got. I know what's inside my heart. I know what's inside my soul. There's one thing that I've got I've never lost, and that's my fear of hell. I've never lost my fear of hell. I've never lost that. I want my children to have that inside their soul. I do. I want them to have that. Well, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer because we need to pray. We need to ask the Lord to help us. And uh, during this revival, we want you to work hard and try to get your lost people to come and, and try to invite them to be here with us in the house of the Lord. And I'm sure these men's going to preach the gospel uh, to them and try to win them to the Lord. And in the meantime, we'll be getting help from the gospel message every night. That word can't be preached without it helping you. Amen. Sometimes it nips you in the bud. Sometimes it whacks a few weeds out of your garden. I mean, just when the word of God goes out, it accomplishes something. And I'm so thankful tonight to be able to hear the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So uh, let's pray for all of our sick. Now, we're not going to spend a lot of time on request. And, uh, but if you've got a special request you'd like to be made known, Brother Paul wants us to remember him. I told you he's working tonight. And... Uh, there's a few other folks. I'll think about it while you talk. Has anybody else, anybody else got a request? All right. Okay. Uh, uh, Big Jim Fields, uh, we had a talk with him last night, and uh, he had a bad stroke, and I really don't know where, where he stands with the Lord. He said he was all right, but he didn't talk too good to me. Uh, last night on the phone, mm -hmm. and uh, he was here about two weeks ago, and uh, two, maybe two or three weeks ago, and he got up and went out. He wasn't here five or six minutes, but uh, his daughter said his whole right side's paralyzed, mm -hmm. and uh, so that shows you how fast things can change, mm -hmm. don't it? It sure does. Mm -hmm. So y'all remember him when you pray. Mm -hmm. he, 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 he needs to get a touch of the Lord in his life. He surely does. Anybody else? All right. Amen. How's he doing? All right. Let's remember that request. All right. You said Sharon uh, Chelsea's ain't gonna come Sunday. All right. Amen. Boy, let's 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 win that lady to the Lord. Let's do that. Let's win her to the Lord. Well,
Love, love, love. Love will win them every time. Amen. It'll do it every time. Praise the Lord. Jesus said, they're going to know you, my disciples. Yes, sir. Because you, you wear a dress, sister? Why, no. Much as we believe in holiness. Amen. Because you pay your tithes, brother? No. Anybody can do them things. But now ain't nobody can just love. It's got to be born inside of you. The Bible said, he that's born of God is born and he's got love. Right. He that knoweth God knoweth love. That love is what will win people to the Lord. I remember uh, Brother David Bernoy talking about you, Walter. And he said, he just loved me right in. Mm -hmm. Me and Sarah wasn't living right and said he didn't jump at me, don't fuss at me. He said he just showed me love. That love's a pretty sharp knife if you ever try to use it. Oh, yeah, it, it'll, it'll, it'll cut them. Amen. Let's come pray. Let's pray for Brandon tonight. Jason, remember my family. Remember my family. Yep, remember Brother Randall's family. He lost another cousin today. And my aunt's having cancer surgery in the morning. I promised her we'd pray for her. Who is Randall? My aunt, my dad's sister. All right, well, let's remember that request. Dale Wheeler's daughter, let's pray for her. Boy, I'm excited about revival. How about y'all? Praise the Lord. Let's just pray we get right in. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. All right. Praise the Lord. Our Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come before you tonight, God. Lord, we thank you, God, for this day, and thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. Thank you, Lord, for uh, God's revival, Lord. God, I praise your name, and I love you, Lord. There's everything that I've done in me. I pray tonight, God, you forgive me, Lord, and we're paying you. God, forgive me. Lord, if there's anything, God, in my life, Lord, I know many, many times I've come short of the glory of God. Many times, Lord, I've let you down. I pray, God, Lord, tonight, Lord, that you just help us, God, in this revival, Lord, that we may see great deliverances. God, we may see the glory of God manifested, Lord, in a great way, Lord. I pray tonight, Lord, above all, God, our chief joy, Lord, is for the sinner man, Lord, the sinner woman, those tonight, Lord, that's not saved and have been, Lord, to travel and help with you tonight, God, we ask you, Lord, that uh, God, that you would move, Lord, on our behalf in this letter tonight that uh, we've anointed it, Sister Sarah, Lord, and uh, God, written to someone, we pray, Lord, that you touch it, God, and Lord, that the Spirit of the Lord would move and manifest itself, God, in that, and others tonight, Lord, all these requests, God, given in tonight, Lord, we know, Lord, that you're bigger than the devil, and God, that you've got all power in heaven and in earth, and Lord, them that's in the hospitals tonight, Lord, and them that's sick, and and afflicted in the body, I pray tonight, God, in the name of Jesus, our God, Lord, that you would move and work, Lord, in the sweet spirit of God. Our Lord God would just manifest itself in a great way. And Lord, tonight, Lord, for our children tonight and our family tonight, Lord, that's our God not where they need to be, Lord. I pray for them tonight, Lord, that you would help them, God. I Lord to see, Lord, that need of salvation. Lord, that need to repent, Lord, that need God to call upon your name. I know that. Tonight, Lord, the time, I God, it's a really short, Lord. And Lord, the Bible said the night's far spent. And God, we realize, Lord, that I God, Lord, it's just slipping away from us. And I just pray tonight, God, that you touch somebody's heart, Lord. Somebody. I God, it needs to be saved. Somebody, Lord, that needs to come home. I pray tonight, Lord, that you help Brother Brandon, God, anointing. God, give him power tonight in his bosom. I pray tonight, Lord, that and God, the message of the Lord would go out and catch the souls of men. And God, Lord, I pray you bless the singing, the testimony. God, may all pain have God be done to bring honor and glory to your name. Now, we love you, Lord. Thank you, God, for this day. Thank you for the good gathering here tonight. Lord, I pray you please bless each one and to be able to take something home tonight. Oh, God, that the hand of the Lord would be upon each one of them. And God, that you'd give them what they need. Lord, some of them worked hard today. They've done it, Lord, before the sun this morning. They've labored all day long, and they've come tonight. Lord, I pray you'd bless them, Lord. I pray the hand of God would just be upon them, and God, you'd give them something from your table. We love you tonight, Lord, in Jesus' holy name, Lord, we pray.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Well, let me start the singing off tonight. Then, uh, Tori, y'all, of course, and y'all come get ready to sing for us. I don't know if I can remember the words <laughs> to this song. Hey, but y'all help me pray. I know all of you know it. <laughs> Once again, I face Satan this morning, and I battled him all the day long. But in my weakness, God sent reinforcements, and at sundown, I'm singing victory song. All's the sun's coming up. In the morning, every tear will be gone from my eyes. This old clay is going to give way to glory. And like an eagle, I'll take to the sky. In a world filled with doubts and confusions, it's so hard when we don't understand. Oh, but I'm standing on a solid foundation, and I hold to an unchanging hand. <coughs> And the sun's coming up in the morning. Every tear will be gone from my eye. This old clay's gonna give way to glory. Just like an eagle, I'll take to the sky. I hope y'all all get to see me shout when I get to heaven. Praise the Lord, I do. I hope all of you get to see me glorified. And I sure hope I get to see you shout and praise the Lord because we're going to do it when we get there. We're going to lift up the name of the Lord. I see them Jason and Steve. Like that, I like it. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Come on, Brother Carson. Y'all come on and say. Bless them, Lord. Bless you, Tori. <coughs> this morning, and I had a warm place that I live in. I got more food than I know what to do with. I got warm Heaven clothes Lord. and I got clean water. I got more things that I could thank him for than. I can yeah. see thank God. Amen. So I'm going to try to sing this song. Praise the Lord. I don't wish bad on my country. I love my country with all my heart because God gave it to me. And I believe he gave me this country. I'm so blessed to be in a country where I can worship God. That's right. Uh, but I prayed to him today and I said, Lord, if being a Christian in a world of compromise means that my country is set, it, it has a... Uh, collision course with desolation so be it because kings and you know, I was reading the Bible and said kings and kingdoms will all pass away so that's God's right. word will stand yeah. that's right course. Amen. and as, even as much as I love my nation Lord I, I pray to God today I've been praying to him all day because I was worrying and God hasn't given us a spirit of fear no. I, was no. I was trying to help I was trying to ask for, uh, for him to help me with that and I prayed all day while I was working and he helped me. He gave me a peace. And I thank him. And I need to, I need to thank him for that. Praise the Lord. <laughs> when I wake up in the morning, I see I've made it through the night. Amen. I listen for my family. Sure enough, they're all right. That's good. As we gather around the table, and bow our heads in thankfulness with tear filled eyes my heart cries we're still blessed yes, praise there the has never been a day he doesn't give me all i need and even in the storm his blessings i receive 
today, like Sister Tori's talking about, and you know, it is a, for us that, that voted for Trump and all that, uh, it seemed like a discouraging time, but I'll tell you something, it was way, way worse that night in the garden for the church. I mean, it looked like, it looked like everything was going wrong. Here come Judas, he kissed him and betrayed him. Here they've drawn a sword and they's a fight in the garden and cut Malchus's ear off. Man, it looked bad. It looked bad. But I'm going to tell you what, it was all in the plan, wasn't it? It was all in the plan. Sir, you reckon you could sing that song? Do y'all sing that or does somebody here at the church sing it? Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, we ain't got to worry about nothing. Amen. I mean, we just pray and go on. We're in the hands of the Lord. But because he lives, well, they arrested him that night. And the next day, they had him hanging on a tree. Amen. It looked bad, didn't it? He told him. he said, would you pray here while I go just a little bit farther? He went that night and he prayed and the Bible said his sweat became as great drops of blood. The anxiety of that night has never been on no man like that before. But bless his good name, they crucified him according to the scriptures. They crucified him. Amen. They buried him. They put him in Joseph's new tomb. Isaiah said he made his tomb with the rich. I, fig I could not figure that out when I first read that. Then I read about Joseph of Arimathea. He is a rich man, the Bible said. And he had a tomb. He had a tomb. And he, nobody had ever slept in that tomb before. Not a man ever been in that tomb. Anybody ever come borrow stuff from you? Anybody ever borrow stuff from you? Me and Bob was uh, digging post holes yesterday and I looked in the barn for my auger that goes on my tractor. I looked and looked and looked. I mean, I wrecked my head and I said, Bob, I remember what? I loaned that thing out. I remember what I'd done with it. I loaned it out. You loan stuff out. But now when somebody comes and says, I just need to borrow it for the weekend, that ain't too awful bad, is it? And that's what Jesus told Joseph. I just need to borrow it for the weekend. Just, just let me borrow that tomb for the weekend. Because on Sunday morning, you can have it back. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
He's alive tonight. I wish it was Easter. Praise the Lord. I'm still, I'm still a pouting at this world over what happened last Easter. We didn't get to wash feet. And we didn't get to have communion and all that. Amen. We're going to do it this year. If we have to do it in the basement cellar, we're going to do it. We're going to wash feet, praise God. We're going to celebrate the greatest event. It wasn't enough that he was just born. He could have been born and amen. We'd have still been in our sins. It wasn't enough that he just died. If he'd have died, we'd have still been in our sin. But he said, I'm the first fruit of the resurrection. He said, in me, he said, in Adam you die. But he said, in me you live. Thank God, sir. Sing it. Let's sing it. Because he lives in 2021, we can live also. We're going to live too, praise the Lord. Sing it, girls. Praise the Lord. God sent His Son They called Him Jesus He came to love Heal and forgive He lived and died To buy my pardon And
Somebody testify after that. Praise the Lord. Help her, Jesus. That's the truth. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Nothing like Jesus, are they? Thank you, Lord. Bless you, Jesus.
I thank the Lord for saving me. And I was reading in Exodus last night when the children of Israel were trying to get away from Pharaoh and God kept hardening his heart. And, and then he started chasing after him there at the end. And I just thank God. He's going to help us through. He really yes. is. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's our time. That's right. Amen. Amen. Joseph was so sure of that promise she was talking about. He said, I'll be dead now. I'll be dead when it happens. But he said, you make sure you take my bones out of here when you go. Then you come to the Exodus and you read that about the blood, the Passover and everything that. And now they're all getting ready to go. They got their sandals on and then there's just a little old bitty portion in there and said, and they bore the uh, Joseph, the coffin of Joseph, and they took him out of there, Brother Ricky. Praise the Lord. Well, I'm ready for preaching. How about y'all? Praise the Lord. I'm ready for some good preaching. We ain't going to sing you to death every night. We're in revival. And I know a lot of you, we ain't rushing the Lord, but we want to get in the meeting and get into the preaching of the gospel. So appreciate Brother Brandon. We love him tonight. You pray for him tonight. He'll help you. If you'll pray for him and preach, he'll preach better to you tonight while you pray for him. Come right on. I'm glad I'm saved. It sounds like um, I ain't saying that I. It don't bother me that the way everything went, but um, sounds like y'all have had a pretty rough day. A lot of you have, and uh, I ain't watched any bit of news or looked at anything in almost three weeks, and I've had a, I've had a good three weeks. <laughs> so I'm saying, if it's bothering you that bad, just quit looking at it. You don't even know what's going on. You quit looking at it for a month. You don't know who's president, what's happened. Just go to church and live right, and you ain't got to worry about it. But um, if you got your Bibles, go to 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter 4, and then we're going to jump back to Genesis chapter 19 if you want to go ahead and mark both of them. 1 Peter chapter 4 and Genesis chapter 19, and y'all be praying for me. Sometimes... Uh, I know everybody ain't a preacher, but sometimes the Lord gives you something, and when you get in service, you think, well, I hope the service just takes off, and, and there ain't no preaching, then I know it wasn't of the Lord. But if you're living right, and you're really called to preach, and you've been praying, and the service don't take off, and they say, get up and preach, you say, well, I guess it is of the Lord. So if it don't, if it don't prick your heart, or cut your heart, or burn your heart, then either I'm not called, or I ain't living right. Because the Bible said when Peter preached on Pentecost that they's cut to the heart yes. and they prayed. The Bible said when Stephen preached that they's pricked in the heart. The Bible said when Jesus preached their hearts burned. So yeah. if one of those three things don't happen tonight, I've missed it somewhere. But if you got your Bibles, First Peter chapter 4, First Peter chapter 4, we're going to be starting in verse 17 and then we'll jump back to Genesis. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Now jump back to Genesis. Genesis chapter 19. Read about 10 verses. Genesis chapter 19. Chapter 19, starting at verse number 14. Now we already know right here that the two angels, God sent them down to Lot in Sodom to, to, to bring Lot out of Sodom. So the angels are talking to him. They've already been trying to beckon him to get out of the city. And they say right here in verse, in verse 12, let's start at verse 12. And the men said unto Lot, Hast thou here any besides, son-in-law and thy sons and thy daughters, Whatsoever thou hast in the city, bring them out of this place. For we will destroy this place, because the cry of them is waxing great before the Lord, before the face of the Lord, and the Lord has sent us to destroy it. Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-laws, which married his daughters, and said, Up, get ye out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-law. And when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou can be... 
consumed in the iniquity of the city. Now that's warning number two. And while he lingered, the men, the angels, laid hold upon his hand and upon the hand of his wife and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto him. And they brought him forth and set him without the city. And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. And Lot said unto them, Oh, not so, my Lord. Behold, now thy servant hath found grace in thy sight, and, has, and thou hast magnified thy mercy which thou hast showed unto me in saving my life, and I cannot escape to the mountain lest some evil take me and I die. Behold, now this city is near to flee unto, and it is a little one. Oh, let me escape thither. Is it not a little one? And my soul shall live. And he said unto him, See, I have accepted thee concerning this thing also, that I will not overthrow this city for the which thou hast spoken. Haste thee, escape thither. For I cannot do anything till thou be come thither. Therefore the name of the city was called Zoar. The sun was risen up on the earth when Lot entered into Zoar. Then the Lord, then the Lord, after they had got out of the city, then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and the inhabitants of the city, that which grew up on the ground. But his wife looked behind, looked back from behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. Okay, that's all I'm going to be reading. I know that was a lot, but you be praying for me. And I'm just going to try to preach for just a minute. But... um. Prayed all day to try to figure out what God would have me to preach. And the other night, I had a prayer meeting. And uh, I started a prayer meeting probably a year ago with a, a bunch of preachers. And one Friday out of the month, we try to come down here and just pray and preach and praise. And just whatever the Lord would have us to do, we come down here and we do that. And for the past year, every time we get down here, we just seems like it just takes off. And we praise the Lord for three or four hours. And then we just go home. That's how it happens every single time. But the last time we had prayer meeting, which was this past Friday, all day at work, the Lord said, preach holiness tonight. Yeah. Preach holiness tonight. Preach holiness tonight. And I said, God, all the, two of them's pastors, a lot of them's preachers. Why do you want me to preach holiness? And he just said, preach holiness. And I said, God, I don't want to be a preacher that stones everyone. And I said that multiple times throughout the day trying to get another message. I said, I don't want to be a preacher that stones everyone. And while I was driving the Lord, the Holy Ghost spoke to me and said, don't be a preacher that stones everyone, but be a preacher that everyone wants to stone. And I said, I can do that if you'll help me. And I really felt the Lord when he told me that, and that gave me strength to be able to come preach it. And then today, in the past few days, I've been praying, what do you want me to preach tonight? The starting of revival, the first night. What do you want me to preach? And the Lord said, preach holiness. Preach what you preached the other night. Because without it, no man shall see the Lord. So we got right here where Lot went down to Sodom. Now I'm just going to walk through this and take my time. And if the devil tries to hinder me, I'll back up and restart. But I'm going to try to preach for just a minute. But the Bible says that when Lot left for the first time, when he first left Abraham, it said that he went down to Sodom and Gomorrah. And while he was down there, another group of people came and attacked Sodom and Gomorrah and took Lot and all the people of Sodom captive. Right, right. And when Abraham heard about it, it said that he went down there and he broke them free. And the, the king of Sodom tried to offer Abraham some of the things that he got. He said, take some of the goods, take some of the women, take some of the cattle, take whatever you want for saving it. And Abraham said, I won't even take a shoelace. He said, I don't need what's down in Sodom. I just came to get Lot. Now, you, we don't need what's in Sodom, but when you got people in Sodom, sometimes you got to go down into Sodom to get them out. But he said, I don't even want a shoelace from down there. You can keep every bit of it. So he brings Lot back with him. And this is the first time that Lot went away to Sodom. Now, any time you read the Bible and you read about Sodom, we can compare it to the world. And if y'all get behind me a minute, I'll, I'll try to preach to you. But you read about Sodom and you compare it to the world. So Lot had done been down in the world once. He left Abraham and he backslid and he got down there among those sinners. And Abraham went and got him and brought him out. I don't know if a few months go by. Or a few years went by, but somehow he ended up back down in Sodom. And I, I know because, and, and I told Jason the other day, I said, I better get all the testimony I have out quick about me being lost and backslid because I said my kids are getting old enough. Well, I don't want them to hear that stuff. 
I don't want them to know Daddy ever done drugs. I don't want them to know Daddy ever got involved in any of that stuff. So while they're little, I want to try to get it out and help people with it while I can. But I can remember when I went back down to Sodom. I had all the memories of the last time I was down there. I knew the last time I was in Sodom that nothing worked out right. I knew the last time I was in Sodom it seemed like I was always in trouble. And I knew the last time I was in Sodom if it wasn't for God and His people I'd have never got out. So it seems like I got out and I started looking back that way again. See, there's a lot in the world that's bad. Anything of the world is bad. But see, when an alcoholic, before he becomes an alcoholic, he tries beer and he gets a little buzz and he has a good time. And then days go by and weeks go by and he realizes, I used to live without this stuff and use it for the weekends and now I can't live without it even for a weekend. Everything's changed. I used to be able to go without it, now I can't. So I believe, I believe Lot... He had those good memories about Sodom. See, he got back with Abraham. He was out of Sodom. He was saved. If we we liken it to our lives, he was back in church and on his way to heaven. But I believe he got to thinking about, I remember what that buzz felt like. That felt good. I remember what fornication felt like. That felt good. I remember what doing drugs felt like. That felt good. Because the devil, he always wants to show you the beginning and not the end, see? That's why when you see the commercials of people drinking out on the beach, that's all you see. There's just a little sip gone, but you don't see the car accident after they leave. You don't see the end of it. But I believe he remembered all the good that happened. And I'm going to get to holiness in a minute, but just let me walk through it. I've been, my stomach's been tore up today. I've been going left and right and said if I can preach about help and us raising each other's hands up and let me preach about Moses and God just said no, preach holiness. So it says that when those angels went down to Sodom to bring Lot and his wife, I love when y'all say amen, but if you don't, it really don't bother me. I know God's called me to preach. So when Lot goes, that, when Lot gets back down there and gets in that mess, The Bible said that Abraham prayed to God and he starts walking through these numbers. He says, Lord, if there be 50 down there, would you save the place? If there be 45, would you save them? And he works it all the way down to 5 or 10 and the Lord said, if they're there, I'll spare the city. So Abraham prays. And two angels, that's the two men that he's talking about, they make their way down to Lot's house. They go down to Sodom and the Bible says that Lot was sitting at the gate of Sodom. I don't know if he was thinking, I need to get out of here. I don't know why a man would be sitting at the gate of the city when he's got a house and a family. But I believe he might have been looking back at those plains where he left Abraham and said, I need to get out of here. And when he seen the two men, he knew instantly that they was God's men. He knew instantly that there's God's men. I'd say that they look different because all the men he was used to seeing in that city were homosexuals. If you go through and read it, I'd say they had a different look. Probably had short hair. Maybe had long sleeves on and breeches. Probably dressed like men. He knew that they was different. And he invited them into, their, into his house. Now after he invited them into his house, these two angels, they said, Lot, you need to get your family and get out of here. Now, he didn't tell him what was going to happen yet. See, some people, it takes more than it does others. Some people, you can tell them they're a sinner in John 3, 16, and if they're in the right place, they'll get saved. But some people, it takes just a little bit more than that. He told him, get your family and get out of here. Well, they lingered throughout the night and went to bed in Sodom at night. They got up the next morning, and the angel said again, Do you have anybody else here besides these that are in the house? If you don't, take them and get out of here, Lot. And it said that he hasted again. See, he kicked rocks. And that seems to be what happens a lot of times. We get people in the church and they don't really see the power, but there's a little bit of word and spirit that they feel and they don't know for sure what to do. They don't know if they need to go or if they need to stay. But it said that he hasted. And finally, finally, The two angels, it said, just hold your hand up. They got him by the hand, and they got the wife by the hand, and yanked them outside the city. Yanked them outside the city. And after they got them out of the city, they said, flee to the mountains. And I'm getting to my text and my message right here. Said, flee to the mountains. And Lot said, surely you've had mercy on me. 
You, you've got me out of the city. I know the fire's coming. The Bible said they already told them the Lord's going to destroy this place. He said, flee to the mountains. And Lot said, Lot said, there's a little city that's real close by. If I go to the mountains, I'm afraid something will happen and I'll die up there. There's a little city close by named Zoar. Can I go over there and stay? And after having to drag him out of the city, they said, just go on. If that's what you want to do, just go on. And Zoar, if you go back a little bit and study it, I'm not trying to weary you, but I want to walk you through it. If you go back and study it, those kings, those kings that sided with Sodom to fight that country that came against them, one of them was Zoar. One of the cities that helped fight with Sodom was Zoar. Now, so you know if they were fighting with Sodom, see, we're against the world and the things of the world. And if any man is in the world and he loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So they, I, I guess this city of Zoar, I guess they supported homosexuals. And I guess they supported lesbians and murder and all the sin that was going on down in Sodom. So he knew Sodom was destroyed. And he knew the mountains... It's a hard life to live in the mountains. And I'm going to relate that to holiness in a minute. But we need to get out into the mountains. Yeah. But see, all of our church people, when they got out of Sodom, they said, let me go to Zoar. Over at Zoar, I can still kindly dress like the world. And over at Zoar, I can still go to the movies. But if I get out in the mountains, that's just too much pressure. I mean, out in the mountains, there ain't no TVs. Out in the mountains, there ain't no movie theaters. Out in the mountains, there ain't no bars. If I get out in the mountains, God, it'll just be me and you. Well, that's how it's supposed to be. It's supposed to just be you and God. But the Bible said, Lot said, let me just go over here to this city. And I jumped back, and that city in the wars just a few months before that had helped Sodom. So we know that they had to be a wicked city. So what I'm trying to say is we need to get back to the mountains. It's hard to live in the mountains. It's a hard life. Holiness is hard. That's why when Elisha asked Elijah for that double portion, he said, you've asked a hard thing because Elijah knew that it's hard to live holy. You know why it's hard? Not because God can't do it. Not because the Spirit don't want you to do it. It's hard because you live in the flesh. And the flesh hates Holiness. The flesh hates holiness. But if we don't get back to it, I'm convinced that we're not going to have revival. See, we can go on and have meetings and call them revival, but if we don't get back to holiness, and what I'm saying is about all of you are out of Sodom, but you need to get out of Zoar and head up to the mountains. See, up in the mountains, we've got convictions. Up in the mountains, we don't believe we ought to have TVs in our house. Amen? Amen, let me hit the TV for just a second. Now, we say that there ain't nothing wrong with it. And we say that we can find some good in it. Well, I'll tell you one thing. When, when I had television, we had direct TV. And I'm just going to get down right where you live. And if I missed it, nobody wants me to preach again, that's okay. But it had 1,200 channels. And out of those 1,200, there's about five of them. I'd say you could watch being a Christian. And, and maybe, maybe it'd be okay. But they some good up in my garbage can up there. If you dig through it, I'm sure you're going to find a half-eaten apple core and you're going to find all kinds of things where you might could get a bite out of it. But who wants to go through the 1,100 channels of junk? What I'm saying is we don't need to say that there's good in something that there's no good in. You could go to my garbage can, dig through it, and get that apple, but who wants to dig through the garbage to get it? And that's how I feel about TV. So I'm just going to stay here and preach on it for a minute. I'm just going to preach on TV for a minute. I know that cell phones has came along, and I'm going to come there too. But TVs, see, we say that we shouldn't lie. We say, say that we shouldn't cheat, shouldn't steal, shouldn't murder, shouldn't bear false witness. Shouldn't commit adultery. But you will turn that on and watch everybody else in the world do it and get entertained by it. And what, what is the difference between their sin and our sin? Has human nature changed? Has sin changed? Has God changed? Sin ain't a game to God. 
So I tell you, you need to do some house cleaning. And you need to get out of Zoar and go up to the mountains. You need to get out of Zoar and go up to the mountains because they ain't no good in that junk. It's of the world. And if any man loves the world, the love of the Father, it's not in you. He that committeth sin is of the devil. So you say, I don't commit sin, but you'll sit there hour upon hour upon hour upon hour and watch the devil's people commit the ungodliest things in the world and you'll laugh at it and you'll cry about it and you'll get excited about it and you'll text people and say, you got to watch this episode and you got to watch that episode. It ain't right. And you don't have to amen it, but it ain't right. There's some things that just ain't right for Christians. Now let me go to the cell phone. Let me go to the cell phone. The cell phone. You say, well, you preach against the TV, but the cell phone's worse. You're exactly right. The cell phone is worse. The cell phone is a lot worse. And people in the church, we've got to a place with the cell phones where we'll get rid of our TVs, and then we'll download Netflix, and we'll download Voodoo, and we'll download Hulu, and we'll have Safari, and we'll type in Disney.com. And what we'll do is just carry around a little TV in our pocket and lift our chest up and go to people and say, we don't believe in television over at Antioch. We don't believe we ought to watch TV over at Antioch. But you get on your cell phone and you watch the same thing that you're going to watch on the TV. Amen? I don't believe a Christian ought to do that stuff. If you got Netflix on your phone, I believe God wants you to delete it. If you got all those other apps I named, I believe God wants you to delete it. You say, why? There's some good in it. Show me. Show me where the good's at in it. Show me how it's got you closer to God. Show me how it's drawn your children into church. Show me how it's helped your home. If we don't get back to holiness in the house, we're done. If we don't get it back in the house, we're done. So we got to get holiness back in the home. What are you saying, Brandon? I ain't saying get rid of your cell phone. I believe it's good to be able to call and to text and to even check the weather. I can do that. I believe all that's good. But if you're going to turn that thing into a little TV, and if you knew what some of your teenage boys and your teenage girls was looking at on that thing, when they're sitting right beside you on the couch, you drop, you, you drop down in your shoes. If you could see the things, everybody's shaking their head, ain't nobody saying amen, I guess I'm, I'm hitting everybody. This is right, ain't it? This is right. This is right. Hey, I just, I, we've got so confused about convictions and commandments. We've got so confused about them. We've said that God's commandments is our convictions. Now, that ain't right. Now, a conviction is something that's not in the Bible. A conviction. I know you, you know a lot of preachers, and I'll just tell you. That's why I did it, because I didn't want to offend somebody. I shaved. Now, I can't find nowhere in the Bible where a beard will send a man to hell. If anything, I can find where men had beards. I can find that. But God convicted me. And about every day for two weeks, I said, I went in there and said, Hannah, you think I need to shave? She said, no. I said, okay. Yeah. And I walked back off. I did, didn't I? Yeah. And about the 10th day, I said, Hannah, you think I need to shave? She said, if it's bothering you that bad, you need to shave. Yeah. Now, there's things that we call convictions right. that God will send us. But there's things that God commanded us that we've started saying is convictions. Yeah. You know he said, bring not an abomination into your house. Yeah. Yeah. What's that fall on? What does that fall on? Right. The TV? The internet? Basically. You say, preacher, you're getting too old about it. I believe it. I'll die for what I'm preaching right now. I don't have to have people do somersaults. I just know it's right. Yeah. See, everybody's saying, I I've already had this come to me with, with trying to live holy. Everybody says, you're just doing it because Jason doesn't. Jason's your father in law. And I'll give Jason credit for this. Jason probably put it in my mind, no doubt. But God had to put it in my heart. And after it got down in there, I don't care who, I don't care if Jason quits. I don't care if anybody quits or who says it's wrong. I know it's right. I know holiness is right. Now I'm just going to keep on going. Now there's things that we say are convictions, but they're really commandments. Now I thought... Don't back up on me here because this is in your Bible and I'll show it to you if you want to come ask me. I thought that a woman wearing jewelry was a conviction. You ever heard a preacher preach that? Amen. I thought that was a conviction, Walter. 
And I thought, well, some preachers that preach holiness, they just don't like women wearing jewelry. That's a conviction. But then God showed me something in that Bible where he said the women ought not to be wearing gold and pearls and costly apparel. Right. Amen. This is, but we say that that's a conviction, but it's a commandment. Just like a woman having long hair, we say, well, it's a conviction. No, it's a commandment. A, a, a man having long hair, he ought to have short hair. I know people don't like this, Jason. I know it's right. I know it's right. And I'm just going to tell you my life and get right down where I live. Because I, I only person I can answer for is Brandon. But after I read that, I went to Hannah because I bought her a wedding ring when we got married. A big engagement ring. It was like a thousand dollars, and um, I read that scripture, and the Lord got to deal with me about her wearing that, and that's the only piece of jewelry she wears, to my knowledge. But if we're gonna go by the Bible, let's go by the Bible. But if we're not, let's just do whatever we want to do. But if we want to get back to the anointing and seeing people saved, we just gotta go by the Bible. I went to her and I said, "I want you to read this." And I see where a lot of men mess up is they go to their wife and say, I'm the head of the house and you're going to get under me. That ain't how you handle it. I went to her and I said, this is what I found. And the Lord's dealing with me over this. I said, I always thought it was a conviction for a preacher to get up and preach that a woman ought not to wear jewelry. And then I read where Peter said and Paul said, no, they aren't, they aren't supposed to be wearing the gold and the pearls and the silver and dressing in costly apparel. They're, they're to be meek. They're to be obedient. They're to be ki- and I'm not trying to hit the women. I'll get to the men because he's the head and he should put it down. But I said, I've always thought those preachers were crazy that preached on wedding rings. Bless you, Lord. Then the Lord showed me that and I said, well, they ain't crazy. I was crazy. You don't have to agree with it, but it's in your Bible. It's in your Bible that women ought not to be wearing jewelry. It's just, it's just right in there. And another thing that's in our Bible, I'm just going to get everything that I can. I thought... I preached to those preachers the other night, and I was preaching on the women. And it was just men in here. So it was all going to their wives. And it was going to my, my wife, I guess. But I said, the Bible says the women ought to be the keepers. Right. See, right here I got two. Yeah. You wouldn't believe how many people said of the house. Yeah. And they confused me. Right. I know this is different. That's okay. Yeah. It's not of the home. See, if it's of the home, you can work around it. That's right. If it's of the home, if, if women ought to be the keepers of the home, you could wiggle around it and say, I can work and still keep up the home. That's right. But let's just get back to the Bible. Bible? Women ought to be keepers at the, at the home. You want revivals they had 100 years ago? Live like they lived 100 years ago. I'm almost done. I know it's been a lot already. But I'm just preaching the Bible. If I was preaching something other than the Bible, I could understand everybody looking at me that way. Now, if you're not getting pricked or you're not getting cut or your heart's not burning, I'm doing something wrong. But keepers at the home. So we just need to get back to the Bible, Brother Clyde. I know it, it hits people, but we just need to get back to it. You say, I can't make it if I quit my job. I've got four years of school in it. I can't make it. Well, I'm just going to get back to me again. The Bible said those that preach the gospel, Paul said it, they ought to live of the gospel. He said if you're following Jesus, you ought to walk also as he walked. So, the Lord showed me that at the home. And Hannah quit her job about a year ago. And when you don't make a lot of money, and then your wife makes about 15000 a year, and you already don't make a lot, and the Lord says, go by the Bible. A $15,000 pay cut to somebody that ain't making a lot of money is a big chunk. Yeah. But I went to her and I said, if we're going to do it by the Bible, if, if we're going to try to live by the Bible, good, you need to quit. You need to quit your job. That's a big one to swallow. $15,000 a year when you don't make a lot is a lot of money. But I tell you, Walter... Since she's quit, God has blessed my home. Since I got rid of my TV, you know, I I know more about my wife now. And she knows more about me. 
And I have family time with my kids that I never had when I had that thing. See, when you got a TV, you'll make them a bowl of cereal and you'll all go sit on the couch and you'll turn something on and watch it for an hour and a half and say you had family time and you didn't speak to them the whole time you were sitting there. Basically. Amen? Yeah. Do you want to get back to holiness? Basically. Do you want God to move in your life? Do you want to have revival? It's just how we got to be. The Bible said when, those, when that angel went to Abraham the first time, he asked, he said, where's your wife Sarah? Yeah. He said, she's in the tent. That's, right. That's where she's supposed to be, wasn't it? She's supposed to be in the tent. We just got to get back to holiness. Yeah. We got to get back to holiness if we're going to have revival. Sarah, if you come play for me. These, we've got a lot of commandments that we've started calling convictions. Amen. And because of that, there's a lot of confusion. There's a lot of confusion. And the devil, he ain't the author of confusion. But since my wife quit her job, I've, I've seen God move in my home. And um, it's all about getting God's order. Bible order in your home. Your husband ought to be the head. If you got to question women, your husband should be spiritual enough where you can go to him and ask him. He should be able to give you a Bible answer. And if he can't, you can't fault yourself. He's got to get right. And that's why it all falls back on us. It all falls back on the daddies. See, there's things that we just got to do as Christians right. if we're going to make it. Amen. If we're going to make it. How many of you have been happy the past few days watching TV? Makes you miserable, don't it? You get on there and all you see is about how many people's died and how many people's overdosed and how the homos and everybody else seems like they're, they're about to have it good. It ain't no good. Get back to holiness. Go ahead and start playing whenever you want to, Sarah. I know I didn't get in a big way of preaching, but I know what I preach was right. That's all that I'll have to answer for is just what I said, not how I said it, just what I said. So the Bible said if, if my people will humble themselves and pray. See, we do need to pray. Nobody wants to humble themselves. You want to get up and come pray? Not because everybody else is, but because you got things wrong. 